Viscosity. So, we have one goal for this session. It's going to be a very brief video, and we're just going to get a very short introduction to viscosity. So, so far we've assumed that fluids flow without any resistance whatsoever. Now, in real life, there is some resistance to flow. And that's associated with basically friction between neighboring fluid layers, uh, which are moving past each other at different velocities, and also from fluids adhering to surfaces. So kind of the stickiness of fluids is a measure of its viscosity. Okay, so that's our measure of a fluid's resistance to flow. We call that the viscosity. Okay, so how do we measure this? Well, imagine a fluid in a container and the top of the top surface of the fluid has an area A and we stick a plate right at the top surface. The depth of our fluid is H. So we're going to move that plate to the right and so what we say is we shear the fluid. So the top of the fluid moves with the plate because the viscosity kind of sticks to the plate and the bottom stays at rest because it's a, that bottom surface is not moving and the other layers move a distance proportional to their distance from the bottom. Okay, so the closer they are to the plate, the faster they go, and the closer they are to the bottom, the slower they go. Okay, so you look at this from the side, there's our starting configuration, and then we move that plate, and we've got different layers of the fluid moving different distances as we move that plate to the right. Okay, here's that same scenario. So if we measure the force we need to keep the plate moving at a constant velocity, then we find a number of things. And what this means is that there's a drag force in the opposite direction, so the force needed to plate, keep the plate moving at constant velocity exactly balances the drag force. Okay, so this force needed is proportional to the speed at which the plate is moving, proportional to the area of the plate, and inversely proportional to the depth of the fluid. And by the way, we're going to see in our equation, here's our equation, this symbol here, which kind of looks like an N, but is the Greek letter eta. And that's our symbol for viscosity. Okay, so that tells us the drag force is eta, the viscosity, multiplied by a plate area times the speed divided by H. Okay, so what about the units of viscosity? Well, let's see what we've got. If we rearrange that equation, we get force times a height divided by an area times a speed. What are all those units? So we got newtons times meters on the top, we get meters squared and then meters per second on the bottom. So if you think about the newton per square meter part, well that's a Pascal. And then the meter on the top cancels the meter and the meter per second on the bottom, and the per second comes up to the top. So we end up with units of Pascal seconds, PA times S. And here we have a table of viscosities, so you can compare, and you can see there's a very wide range of values here. So we're going... Um, a factor of 250,000 from water at 20 degrees C compared to peanut butter. Peanut butter does not flow very easily, so it's got a very high viscosity. Water, on the other hand, is uh, not very resistant to flow. It doesn't stick very much, so it's got a low viscosity. It does depend on temperature. Motor oil, about 65 times as viscous as uh, water, and so it's 0 0.065 pascal seconds. Honey, very sticky and you can have a range there between 2 and 10 pascal seconds. So again, that's between 2,000 and 10,000 times as viscous as water is at 20 degrees C. And then you get peanut butter, which uh, does not flow very easily at all. Very sticky. Okay, so that, in fact, is just our very brief introduction to viscosity. And that's all for today.